we'll go ahead and begin the show. All right, our first photographer, Human Shadnia. Here you go. One, two, three, one, two, three. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, okay, my name is Human. Uh, I'm your northern neighbor. I visit uh, Longmont quite often, last four years. Um, I started doing photography as a hobby. Uh, I tried to register distractedbybirds.com. I came up with that idea on a date. The date didn't go well, and I didn't register the domain because I saw a bird, and I was distracted. I started doing this. This is a shot with a bridge camera, with like you know a three hundred dollar Canon camera. When I was walking around hiking in, in Longmont, and it was the worst time in my life, COVID. Um, but I was like, I was almost half blind in one eye. I looked at this thing. I started to shoot. I tried to get the focus right. I went home and looked at it on big screen. I'm like, whoa, this is fun. I like to do this. So I started investing in equipment. Yep, let's, let's look at the next one. All right, I shot this one in the next winter. It turned out to be my most popular photo on social media. Um, little Robin, I shot through my window with a Tamron 150 600 uh, with a Juniper Berry. Uh, I think at that point, people needed a happy message. Everyone was going through that COVID thing, OK? Um, and then, so I started doing a little bit more uh, serious stuff. This was shot at the Coyote Ridge with a um, 600 millimeter, um, I think F5.6. Uh, the bouquet is completely natural other than adjusting the colors. Nothing is added or removed from this shot. Spotted toy. Um, all right. All right, so Pella Crossing, looking for these guys, just taking the chance. Um, my son really loves this one. I don't understand why. The background is okay. It's not perfectly focused. I find those milk thistles distracting, but evidently they tell a story. You never, you never know which one of your photos other people like. You know, you just show it and they give you a response. All right. All right, juvenile bald eagle shot with an 800 millimeter F11 with a 1.4 extender at Macintosh Lake. What I like about it, day and light, open eye, close eye. Um, those scuff marks on the on the beak, the reflection of the feathers inside the eye. I love it. All right, I know in photography, not, some pictures are for birders, some are for, for photographers. This is called um, trout surfing. <laughs> uh, shot with an 800 millimeter handheld, and I find panning a very effective and easy technique. It's easier than you think because if a bird is behaving and flying at the same altitude, you just and add two stops of uh, um, civilization to, to the picture. All right, forgive me for the next one. Okay, Macintosh Lake, blue heron, spear fishing. Well, I like, <laughs> evidently, because they can't catch. What I like about this photo, after watching it a little bit, I like to, to the flow of water uh, drops, the droplets. One goes over there, and the shadows are here. And then as the bird is lifting the fish, one, two, three, and one ray of blood. That's it. Thank you very much. If anyone has any questions. So, any questions for who? Hit me. This is the uh, Robin shot. Mm-hmm. So, so it's shot through a wet winter window. So this is not intended. And some of it is an artifact of Topaz AI. Uh, but the focus on the bird was perfect. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. I just, I just tried to get the eye. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. What's the favorite picture you've ever taken of a bird? Oh, that's a difficult question. I think the first one, because it told me, hey, you can do this. You know? Yeah, I mean, with a three hundred dollar, uh, you know, point and shoot camera, I'm like, and I had to go home and look at the picture, big screen, like, I like this, I, I want to do this. Thank you. And I, I just want to point out because I don't know if I'm the only one that's ever noticed this, 
But the heron's eye is like a fish eye. <laughs> so many times when you see a heron with a fish, yeah. their, their eyes are just yeah. very similar. The fish yeah. is looking at the heron and they're going, yeah. just a cousin. Yeah. And this heron they gave me actually two shots that I really like. One of them is printed and it's outside when he just saw the fish and it just completely turned, you know, like the airplane turns and, and sat down and, and hunted this, this fish. All right. Thank you. Okay, questions? Okay, Hidden. Uh, so at 800 million of lens, I'm actually not even aware of any lens that's like strong than like 600. Well, Canon has, that's a good question. Canon uh, made this 800 f11 um, fixed uh, point lens, which photographers, based on the theory, they hated. They're like, oh, f11 is too dark, blah, blah. But you know what? I don't go to shoot birds in the mor early morning. I don't do it. I do it at perfect light at my uh, leisure. And it, it, it kind of works. And then even with like 1.4x, it's, it's still good enough. I won't be able to shoot owls. I won't be able to shoot, you know, birds that are outside my uh, leisure time, but it works perfect. It's it's not an expensive lens, it's super, extremely light. Canon just um, introduced the 200 to 800, which is trying to get that reach, but help you to carry one lens and not miss the birds that are close. Because if, if I'm walking around with this lens, I can't shoot anything before, below you know, 30 feet. So um, so yeah, there's, there's a couple of options. I mean, and if you go up in price-wise, yeah, there's, there's a two million dollar, sixteen hundred millimeter. If five of you guys know what I'm talking about, yeah. So there are some lenses. <laughs> yeah, I, I shoot with R5 and mostly the RF800. Yeah. It is a full frame, yes. Because I have a crop sensor. Yeah. So I can get to six twenty. Yeah, yeah. With like a, I'm shooting like three hundred millimeters with one point four. Mm -hmm. Converter, yeah. Like but I actually want to be more than that. So. Yeah. And then I'm at F8. I mean, F16 for some of these shots. I mean, if you can't shoot, you can't. But if you can, it just it takes you there. It gives you the advantage. I, I line up with 10 other photographers and 800, honestly, 1100, 11, 20, 100 millimeters wins if light is good. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right, Andy. Here we go. Thank you. Would you like me to start off with a little bit of beatboxing? Oh, yeah. It's not going to happen. Sorry, yeah. Um, I'm Andy Poland. I live in Highlands Ranch, so it's a little bit of a trek coming up here, but I've been spending a ton of time uh, in Longmont recently at St. Vrain photographing ospreys, and so... Yeah, it's, it's the place to be. Uh, but I've been photographing for probably around 25 years, I think. And that's kind of what gets me through the difficult times, gets me in nature, find my peace, happiness with birds and animals. So that's a little bit about me. I've got a 15-year-old daughter, so who doesn't care about photography or birds? <laughs> so... This was up at uh, Watson Lake, which is um, up just a little bit kind of northwest of Fort Collins. Um, we'd been up photographing a pygmy owl not too far away from there and heard that there were golden eagles at that lake. And so we popped by. It was a really, really cold evening. Um, we knew that there was a nest in the area. And um, getting ready to call it a day, I ran into another birder um, that I had known from social media and we essentially got out of our cars, we're chatting it up. I looked up and there's these two eagles flying over and they started kind of, I don't know, play fighting. Um, I think they're actually pretty young eagles and uh, was able to catch a few shots. The whole thing lasted maybe not more than two minutes. Uh, so really lucky to be able to see that. Golden eagles are kind of a treat, so. Um, these uh, two particular uh, juvenile bald eagles I photographed at Rocky Mountain Arsenal. Um, this was probably only around, I don't know, six, eight weeks ago um, for a period of uh, Derby Lake for a period of around uh, two weeks. There was probably around 12 to 14 bald eagles in the area. 
uh, fishing in the lake, a lot of interaction. Um, it felt like kind of being in Alaska for a period of two weeks. It was just incredible. Um, you got to kind of strike while the iron is hot. So that's that's where that particular photo was taken. So um, this is the uh, the one that got away. Um, in that particular instance, um, I, that I, I want to actually I'm trying to remember if that was a bald eagle or an osprey. I'm pretty sure that's a bald eagle. Um, but that's what I thought. Yeah, Bar Lake. Um, taken in the winter. Um, if you go out to Bar Lake anywhere from around probably like late November through um, probably the end of January, you can have anywhere from up to about 150 bald eagles out at Bar Lake fishing. Um, you can photograph them from the eagle platform. Um, interestingly, they go back and forth sometimes out to the wild animal refuge in Keensburg as well. Um, they're out there being opportunistic when they feed the animals. Bald eagles are like free food, so they fly down and grab something. But in this one, it was a it was a miss on that particular one. But I still liked the way it turned out with the water and everything. So when I was uh, photographing the golden eagles that day, not too far from there, um, this was the the prize that I had been looking for, which is a pygmy owl. Um, I, there's a location that I know of with a nest every year. Um, I call this kind of the angry bird pygmy owl photo. Um, They're absolutely incredible to watch. They're very difficult to find. They're probably about the size of a Coke can, but I will tell you that they are fierce little hunters. Um, we've watched them dive down to the ground grabbing mice. Um, in that particular area, there is one of the largest bat populations in the state of Colorado, and they catch bats on the regular also. I still have yet to be able to get a pygmy owl catching a bat or carrying a bat, but I'm definitely going to keep at it. So lots of great birds in this part of the state. Similar pygmy owl. Um, we were getting a little bit past, um, a little bit in, later into the evening. Um, one thing that is a little bit tough is, so when I sent these photos in, I wasn't, I thought they were just going to be reviewed. They're actually all watered down for Facebook. So um, you can tell because I've got my watermark on them. So the actual photo itself, the larger file is a little bit more clear, but um, I don't like people stealing my photographs. So I water everything down and put a watermark on it for Facebook. But same place, um, one of the mating pair of pygmy owls, I'm not sure if it's the same one you just saw, but um, the one picture that I'm still trying to get is where it's straight on doing that same kind of pose. Um, and it was really just in a yawn, so nothing too exciting, but makes for a neat photo. Looks like he's trying to pretend he's a turkey. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so short-eared owls, um, if you're in the photography community and you're on social media, you've probably heard of these owls. Um, they're kind of in the Weld County area. Um, they're a very difficult bird to find. Um, there's a lot of searching to find out exactly where they were, but once the word got out, quite a bit of photographers found them. What I liked about this particular photo was almost like a bald eagle kind of action where they were um, you know, kind of upside down and doing all kinds of acrobatics. Uh, this was taken from really far away. I shoot with a uh, with a Sony 600 millimeter f4 on almost all these photographs, and I mean this was taken like at a pretty great distance. So I was pretty happy um, with the way it turned out. So. Uh, this is a a common merganser, but in my opinion, there's absolutely nothing common about a common merganser. Um, this particular uh, Duck actually shows up to City Park every year, so for all the birders out there. Oh, I'm so sorry. So I'm, I'm getting off of the X, my apologies. But anyway, yeah, so this common merganser, she's had, I think, up to about maybe a dozen babies. Um, it, the part about nature that I love is it gets you out of nature. You see these beautiful things with the babies on the back of the merganser. Uh, the difficult part is that when you're watching them throughout the entire season, little by little, baby by baby disappear. And usually by the end of the season, um, there's usually like two or three left. So it really is kind of remarkable um, the, the work that the moms do to keep those babies alive. And I've watched her 
fight off uh, mallards. Um, and then I don't know what really gets the babies. I haven't witnessed that, and frankly, I'm glad I haven't. But it's a gift to be able to see it. And every year she comes to City Park in Denver, so highly recommend checking it out. And one thing you can kind of see it in this photo, the teeth. Oh, yeah. They, unlike other ducks, they really seem to have teeth. <laughs> and if she looks a little angry, it's because she has all of those teeth but no toothbrush. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Hi. Where did you photograph the pig meow? Yeah, kind of... Uh, <laughs> In a, in, 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 a, in a tree, um, not far from Fort Collins. <laughs> in the Fort Collins area, yeah. Where are they kind of around the general area? Yeah, they are. Um, I've, I've seen them in Lyons and Fort Collins. I've seen them down in Littleton. Kind of, there's been several different spots. I mean, one thing I will tell you is it's difficult to find them, and I think an interesting thing is when you're a photographer, you want to get the shot, um, and photographers are kind of not wanting to give away spots sometimes. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's because they don't want anybody else to get the shot. Sometimes, in my case, I want to protect the birds and try and not have too many people get out um, because sometimes they get crowded and they change their behavior, and then all of a sudden the lines of ethics uh, become a bit of a problem. But yeah, they're definitely out there, and you know, you can keep an eye on social media and, and you know, keep in touch with me. I'm, I'm okay to share with one or two people on occasion and have people go out with me if it's something you really want to see, especially birders, because I, I think birders sometimes are more ethical than photographers on, on occasion. Um, they're really there to see the bird in the spotting scope from a distance um, and, and, and protect it. And sometimes photographers can give all the photographers a bad name, sometimes not, but... I'm a little cryptic, that's why. Hi. Hi. Do you have, you've shared with us a number of owl shots, or multiple species. Do you have a favorite bird to photograph, and do you have one that's elusive? Yeah, the owl Sharpton is the one that I've had such a really hard time finding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> bad joke. So, favorite birds. Um, hummingbirds are definitely one. Um, I think they're really beautiful. They're kind of nature's little miracle. Um, it's, it's on my bucket list to get down to Costa Rica and see all of the different ones with the longer tails and the different things. Um, but I'm building my yard. I've xeriscaped it. I've planted tons of pen stem in and orange carpet and different things so that I can attract them to my yard. Um, so I would say probably that's one of my favorites. Um, elusive, I think I've pretty much at least from a Colorado standpoint, I've photographed most of the birds that I've wanted to see. But as a photographer and having, having done this for a really long time, it's like you, you, you don't just want to get the bird, but you want to get that special pose. Like I got the pygmy owl, neat photo, want to get it with the bat. So it's like anything else. It's like you see the species, it's really great, but then every year you go back and you want to get the next thing that's a little bit different of uh, interaction or some kind of a pose or whatever it is. But yeah, that's, I, th I think most everything that I've gotten. Um, but like I said, I want to get out of the country and, and go to some other places and see what, I don't even know what all is out there. I can't wait to find out. It's how I want to spend the rest of my life is photographing birds. So thank you for the question. Anything else? Thank you for your time, everybody. Kathleen. Hello. So back in 2018, I was living in Hawaii. And I took a photo with my iPad of an egret with a gecko hanging out of its mouth and shared it on my Facebook page and people started saying, you should join um, Hawaii Bird Lovers Facebook page. So I thought, okay, I'm going to dust off my old 35 millimeter camera and I'll go out and see if I can shoot, shoot some birds. And so, and then it took hold. And 
<laughs> Before you know it, I was uh, hiking and birding all the time, and I upgraded, you know, as someone else mentioned earlier, my camera, and, and then we moved back here at the end of 2022. So all of the photos that you're going to see tonight of Colorado birds, I am a new Colorado birder. So I'm learning every single day and stopping and talking to other photographers that I see and trying to learn as much as I can. And I have to tell you the um, bird calls I am really not good at yet, but I've got a few. But anyway, so that's kind of my birding journey. So this is a lazuli bunting. I took that up at... Um, up in the Poudre Canyon, and I love the lazulis. They have a beautiful call, and they're just fun to watch, and they're always songsters, so. Uh, bald eagle from my own neighborhood where I live. We, um, sometimes I'll walk around. I carry a Nikon D500 with a 200 to 500 millimeter lens, so it's a heavy camera. But I don't use a tripod ever. I just handhold all the time. And um, so um, it's fun to have uh, these, these kind of birds right there in your own neighborhood. And so sometimes I walk around with my camera. In Hawaii, I was known as the bird lady in my neighborhood because I was there all through COVID. And I would bird every single day in my own neighborhood and trying to get the EO, which is the Hawaiian hawk. And um, we have short-eared owls in Hawaii, the pueo, and other birds like that. This is the northern shoveler. Um, I was over at the Environmental Learning Center, and if you've been over there in Fort Collins, there is this odd drainage ditch that runs all along this gravel road. And they will, sometimes the birds will just fly above the water and you're, you're above them. So you can actually almost get, you know, literally at their eye level. So it's really a nice, a nice little runway for photographers to get a good shot. And the great horned owl, that one was taken up at Terry Lake in Fort Collins. I, when I first got back to uh, Colorado, I, I, we didn't have a home. We were staying with friends up at that area. And so I just walk around and take photos. And this guy was just gorgeous. And the northern flicker, that guy that bangs on your uh, chimney in your house and, <laughs> you know, and it's somewhat annoying at times, but just gorgeous. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that was just taken at Roland Moore Park uh, right by where I work. So it was one of those, I'm going to go take a walk for a few minutes and ran into this uh, beautiful flicker. And there we go. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Look at how haggard this poor, poor, <laughs> this poor bird is. This merganser uh, is going, what happened? <laughs> and probably, where are my other five chicks, you know? <laughs> so, but I uh, would go out. This was at Arapaho Bend in uh, Fort Collins. And this, this little family was there for quite a long time, and I'd go around, and I got lucky one day that they weren't in the middle of the reservoir, and so, and they were all kind of looking my direction, which was another really plus, plus for me, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know, this is like the last moments, but he's still alive, <laughs> so you got to eat, yeah. So this hawk, I was walking down a trail at um, Prospect Ponds, and uh, I saw the red tail, you know, on the on my left side, and it was taking off, and it popped down into some pretty tall grass, and popped back up and flew down the trail and and grabbed a branch, and I just was running down the trail to see if I could see even what it had caught. And luckily, I got there before this guy was gone. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of an interesting shot. Red tail hawk v. vole. So I don't think the vole did very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Oh. OK. Coming from Hawaii, um, very different kinds of birds. Very different, um, yes. There's really no crossover. It sounds kind of like I mean, introduced birds, there are a few. Yeah. So they have a, do they have like the, I don't know how, how, how 
does, they, does each bird also have a, a Hawaiian name? All of the natives, definitely. So, yeah, and if anyone was going to ask what my favorite Hawaiian bird is, it's the Ele Pa'o. It is a little flycatcher, and they're the cutest birds because I love to hike, and we would be out hiking, and these are birds that like to follow you when you hike, so they're not real friendly, um, but they will follow you all along the path, and it's really cool. Yeah. What's the name of the Hawaiian uh, the, e the EO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we had a lot of hawks that lived right in our neighborhood, and it was really fun. Every day I'd go out looking for hawks, and I actually photographed one particular hawk for a couple years, um, from juvie to adult, and um, I went, it went through a, a serious illness at a, as a youngster, and never quite learned how to hunt or fly very well. And I saw some really interesting things because because it was a, such a poor hunter, um, this bird would beg for food from other hawks. So it would be out there and it had its own particular screech. I could tell it from blocks away, you know. And um, so I saw birds actually bring it, minor birds, to eat. Yeah, it was fascinating. I'd never known that that would happen. But, uh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks. Thank you. You talked a little bit about obviously being in Hawaii and being called back in Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say are the differences in kind of the experience of being out and thinking here versus there? Um, well, it's interesting because. In Hawaii, I mean, I, I hiked and birded in my neighborhood, but the only real native bird in my neighborhood was the EO, the Hawaiian hawk. And you had to travel great distances up the volcano because that's where most of the forest birds are. Um, they're wet for forest birds, the EEV and the Elepa'o and the Amakihi and, you know, all of these birds are up in the, in the forest in the Kapukas, which are forested areas surrounded by lava. And so you'd have to hike across lava to hit a kapuka, and then across lava to hit a kapuka um, so that you could see the birds because they're not going to be out on the lava. Um, so it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was really trekking, and you were out in the middle of nowhere most of the time. Here, there's so much wildlife right where we live. Um, you know, that is really fascinating to me. You know, I can take a break at work and go over and get this really pretty flicker, you know. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm driving up a volcano, you know, and, and getting out there. And we live on um, uh, the island of Hawaii, so it, on the rainforest side, so very rainy. You know, we'd make plans to go birding, and then you'd just, you'd never know what the weather would be like when you'd get up there. And then if you, if it was pouring rain, you just keep going to the other side of the island and go do um, shorebirds, you know, so, yeah. So it's a, it's kind of a, a different experience in that respect. Yeah, thank you. Any other? Thank you. Yep. Awesome. All right, Niall Bondi. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I think I am probably one of the most beginning photographers here, so I'm feeling a little sheepish. Oh, maybe you as well. <laughs> um, I just started about a year ago, like literally last May. I was going through a hard time, and um, since I moved to Colorado, I kept sending friends iPhone photos saying, one day I'll get a camera and I'll send you <laughs> better photos. And finally, I was like, what am I waiting for? So I, I got a used um, Nikon D3200 and started shooting on that and then halfway through the summer I got a 70 to 300 millimeter lens and that's still the the best lens that I have and what I shoot most of these from um, and so 
this one here, like anything that is relatively close up is because I was actually quite close to the birds. Um, <laughs> um, I just, I got captivated by the herons last summer. I literally spent hours just watching them. I would just go and like, there was one morning I like stood in a tree for like three hours and <laughs> didn't, didn't even realize how much time had passed. Um, and just, you know, just really loved watching them preen and fish and you know hunt all of that um and so that's 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 how i spent my summer um so anyway this was a more recent shot it was maybe a month or two ago just uh, you can probably tell it's morning light um i just i got out there and and um i'm i think not a birder in the sense that i I announce my presence. I, I always say hello to the herons when I show up. Um, and some of them take off right away, and some of them really don't mind my presence. And, and I, I cannot, people ask me if I can tell the difference between the herons. I cannot. Um, some of them, I suspect, know who I am because I go to the same pond all the time um, and, and are just not bothered by me. So anyway, um, this was just a, a lovely morning shot that I got. Um, and then the pelicans, of course. Um, this was down at Golden Ponds. Um, I think this was a day that, that I saw them. They were doing a lot of fishing. I didn't happen to get any good in-action shots, but I just I love watching these weird little birds, or large birds. <laughs> um, they just are fun and funny, I think. Oh, and this one. Um, this was, I don't remember the name of the pond. Merganser. Yeah, yeah, it's the Merganser, but um, it's the pond over by the, by the Boulder County Fairgrounds. Um, I just got this lucky shot. <laughs> and then this one I just got a couple weeks ago and just loved the, the wing grazing the water. I, I'd never gotten a shot like that before. Um, just really loved that shot. That's it. Yeah. Does anybody have questions? Uh, yeah. So I know we've all got those birds that we want to be able to shoot. We yeah. We haven't had that opportunity yet. And because you're, you know, just starting out, what is that elusive bird that you'd love to get? The elusive bird. Um, <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure. I wasn't prepared for that question. Um, I mean, I've I've gotten some nice shots of eagles, but they're all far away because I don't have the lens. But I I did, I saw some. Um, I saw a lot of eagles this this late winter, early spring. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly the the juvenile bald eagles. Um, I would love to get better shots of them, but um, I don't know yet. I I need to think about that. <laughs> Thank you for asking that. I'll think about that. Yeah. In your elephant shot, were you focused on the bird, or were you really aware of the wonderful patterns in the water? Yeah, that's a good question. Both. I I I love the reflection shots, um, so I'm always like trying to to capture that together. Um, so I would say both. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you. I'm glad you were ahead of me because I'm certainly an amateur in this room. Um, I'm Brian Kennedy, and I'm I'm in search of the beautiful, and I, and I'm not really a birder. I just like to take pictures, and I go walking with my dog, and I have the camera with me. I'm foremost a hiker and a dog walker, and less so a photographer. And maybe you'll be the judge of that. But I'm thrilled to be here. I I feel like I hardly belong, given what I've seen so far. So. Let's take a look. Um, yes. More mic? OK, sorry. Brian, you belong. Thank you. Um, that's a huddle of pelicans. Um, you see these pelicans over at uh, Sawhill Ponds and over at uh, Cottonwood Marsh and those sort of things. I've got tons of pictures of these, and I just love them. And I, I just thought this had some fascinating symmetry. Uh, tree swallow, and I love the blue head there. And um, I take all of my photos with one lens. Um, it's a 18400, 
So I, I get what I get. I don't want to change lenses. I just want to be there. And I'm, I have a rule around my photography where I don't wait for more than a minute or two. I don't stand and wait and take 150 shots of one thing. I'll take one, maybe two, and move along. Because I'm with my dog, and she lets me know it's time to keep going. So I think I caught that one out on a trail, uh, northeast Boulder, uh, Teller, Teller uh, um, Trail, out that way. And these turkeys, um, I, I really think turkeys are funny to watch and, and beautiful, far more beautiful than a lot of people realize to see that for that uh, coat of feathers. So this was up on the Joder Trail at the high point, sort of south of west of here. And this is one of my favorites, um, the best dressed bird we have. And uh, just trying to look cool is the way I like to think of that one. <laughs> I, I have a couple of pictures of that, you know, it looks like it's blowing smoke. So I, I just think those are outstanding and, and beautiful and I always love to see them. I haven't seen one this season yet. Of course, your northern flicker with chilly feet. Uh, launching into that cold air out at uh, CU South. I spend a fair share of time. I live not far from there. So that's uh, my flicker. And um, this was quite recently a nice little fight in the air with a bald eagle above in that same tree watching sort of dismayed by, I think, the, the antics of these young ones. I think it's a uh, immature bald eagle above and a red tail below. And I got to watch that little dog fight and uh, that was pretty neat. And this is the one I brought tonight. Um, this owl, I think, out by Bear Creek near St. Andrew's Church. And I was out there this morning. And the story I'll tell about that was I'm always with my dog, Black Lab, loves to go swimming. And in Bear Creek, there's a little drop in a pond. And it kind of carves out a swimming hole for her. She goes in there, so she's soaking wet, and we're walking down the creek, and she runs back toward the creek, which I always let her do, and she rolled in something dead, nasty, awful. <laughs> and, and I was just like, oh my God, what is that? And it's goo all over. I don't know what it was. It was awful. You know, and you're, you know, you got your camera, and you're, you know, just like, okay, what are we going to do here? I carry, you know, a pouch with my stuff in it. I had some tissue, so I, I tried to clean her off. I could hardly do it. And um, I went to then dispose of this, and there was nowhere to keep it on me. So I had to go backtrack to a dumpster. And so on my way to the dumpster, though, I look up above St. Andrew's Church, and there's a great horned owl up there. And it had a little owlet. And when I came back and saw the photo, I had the cutest little face of this owlet next to another great horned owl, very close to this one. And I thought, wow, that was just marvelous. And it was like, you know, making lemonade out of the lemons, right? It was just finding a way to deal with what we're all dealing with, which is a lot of ugly. And my goal is to post the beautiful to offset the ugly. And so I thought that was amazing. So I'm walking back just thinking, wow, that was really neat. I never would have seen it if I hadn't backtracked because of that. So I'm walking down Inca Parkway in my neighborhood. It's just a suburban street in Boulder and... Right in front of me walks this bobcat. And again, the, it just crossed the street. It was right in front of me. The timing was such that I could have easily missed it. Nobody else saw it. It was just amazing and beautiful. And that's what I'm all about is trying to find the beautiful. So you never know when something bad happens what bright light might follow. So that's my story. Thank you. I just learned that Brian's my neighbor. Oh. Like on Gilpin. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like right yeah. We'll have to go out walking. Yeah, we should. Okay. What, 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 probably, what kind of dog do you have? A black lab. I female. A okay. A little Siberian. So, okay. Uh, we, St. Andrew Church, the whole Yeah, yeah, lot, yeah. The great Horned Owl. That's it's right at the corner of the parking lot, about 60 feet up in the tree. Yeah, I got a big story Yeah, yeah. So, All right. Question. I just have a comment. I mean, I've heard you self-deprecate a couple of times. <laughs> Your photography is beautiful. You have an incredible eye. And oh, thank I you. I can tell that you have a love of nature, and it shows through your photographs. Oh, so 
Thank you. Thank you. I just don't have a lot of skills with the camera itself. I do a lot of looking. <laughs> Not every day. Thank you. Question about the first shot. Yeah, sure. Um, the focus is really interesting. Just, uh, the visual outline, nothing special here. Oh, no, no. Nothing special for me. When this first came up, I thought it was a large format. Nope. It, it kind of a Canon EOS Rebel, you know, uh, 18 400 millimeter lens. Probably standing, uh, I'm not quite sure where this was, probably standing on that. that uh, sort of dam-like structure that's next to the pond. Um, that's between the two ponds, looking west towards the new construction. It's out that way. That, I, I've seen 150 pelicans there at one time. It's an amazing place. What, what's on your list of places to go? Like, target birds, target locations? Like, um, what's on your bucket list? I guess this season I haven't been on top of uh, Table Mountain. And I've seen some uh, beautiful things up there. I just haven't been there yet. But um, I'll go anywhere and I'll take my camera. And I just have it right here. And I'm always looking. And I, I, have, I go out every day. So I can go anywhere I want. I just want some better weather. I'm not into this wind. I'm not into this wind and this cloudy stuff. I go out early in the morning usually. It's been cloudy every morning for a week or more. Um, before 7 to 7.15, I'll be out by then, but not super early. Did you play the rebel No. I, I would. I just don't tend to be out at that time. I get up, take my dog out. <laughs> I find it's much better uh, first thing in the morning than any other time. Yeah, I, I, I kind of really, all the early birds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've actually never photographed birds. Yeah, I would love to do that. Well, I have photographs of a lot of other things, but the birds are the beautiful, and I want to share the beautiful. Thank you. Hello, everyone. First thing I want to do is thank uh, Longmont Public Media for hosting this. This was um, such a wonderful idea, and the you know the birding community, whether you photograph them or just look at them or whatever, uh, it's it's um, you know we all care about the environment and and what we're photographing or looking at. So thank you for being here. I started doing photography about. 55 years ago, I started with a brownie. I'm not sure too many of you can say that. And um, just was just enamored of it. And mostly at that point in time, I, I certainly wasn't doing bird photography with a, with a brownie. But uh, I got into uh, my high school yearbook and my high school uh, newspaper. But, well, maybe that was my first bird photography. I was taking uh, photos a lot of the cheerleaders. So, um, <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, probably about 30, 35 years ago, I started dabbling in bird photography. I'm primarily a landscape photographer. Um, and I've, I've always loved birds. My, my mother got me into it when I was quite young, and it took me a while to get to the photography stage of it. But it's, um, you know, it's just a wonderful thing to do. You go out, you're in the world, you're, a lot of times you get up early to do it and catch that morning light because it, when it comes down to it, it's, it's about the light. You know, you can't do any of this without the light. So uh, it's it's just a wonderful way to spend a morning, and um, so yeah, let's let's get into it, I guess. Okay, this is what I call a yellow-bodied blackbird, but mo well, that didn't land like I thought it would. <laughs> it's actually a, a yellow-headed uh, blackbird, uh, so I like to switch it around. 
But anyway, it seems like a lot of you have been out to uh, Walden Ponds and Cottonwood Marsh. This is where this photograph was taken. I have kind of two ways I like to do the photographs. Uh, one of them is portraits. And, and it's kind of like with a human portrait. You want to show the subject in the best possible light. And then the other one is an environmental uh, portrait or environmental uh, photograph. And in that case, you kind of want to show them, show the, uh, the, uh, the viewer where they are, where they live. And this one I kind of think is in the middle between those two. And, um, and, and that's one of the things I like about it. So, okay. This, it, well, you all know what this is. This is a great horned owl. And, uh, you know, it's, this is where you just have to pay attention to the birding community and everything. I found out about this owl, uh, well, actually it wasn't the birding community. It was a friend who lived near Twin Lakes. This is near Twin Lakes, um, uh, near Gun, or in Gun Barrel. And this was the mama. And the, the, the babies were right about over here. So she's keeping a close eye on them and hence her uh, intense stare but it's this is like 20 feet from a from the footpath and she just didn't care and um, nobody bothered her this does anybody know what this is can i see some very good i was looking for this bird for so long you you can hear them but they are they do such an amazing job of just blending into their environment. It took me probably three or four days to finally find this bird. And, and when I did, it, by the way, this was out also at uh, Walden Ponds. And when I finally did, I just, it was actually my birthday. And I just took a whole bunch of photos. And this is probably, I think, the best of the lot. And, and it was kind of fun because there was another photographer who would hang out there quite frequently and she came along and saw me very intent on something and I pretty much had taken all the photos I needed to and so I just handed it handed the spot off to her because you had to be kind of right in the right spot to get this bird but um, what is it? it's a uh, American bitter okay and uh, spotted toey, of course. Uh, this is uh, Gregory Canyon, and yeah, it's, it's this. This was kind of interesting because I had set up, and um, I, I don't use a blind. I just believe in getting out there and just sort of, you know, I don't want to do the Boulder woo woo thing, but just being one with nature, just try to fit in, and. Uh, <laughs> So I just, I just set up and I sit down and this bird was right at the edge of where I could focus. And um, you know, that's, that's the other side of my photography. Having been uh, raised on Fuji Velvia and Kodachrome and all that, you know, when you do uh, use uh, slide film, you, you have to get the photo right in the camera. You don't really have much room to go in, and um, it, it was really hard to you know, crop things or change focus or change um, uh, exposure. So I, I try to get things right in the camera and, and this one was almost too close. It was right on the edge. Righty. Does anybody know what this one is? Very good, it's a chipping sparrow. Uh, this one, uh, I had to go a long ways to get this one. This was on my back deck. And uh, I, had, I, had, I, I didn't even plan this or anything. I had set up a, uh, uh, my, that's an antique pitchfork that it's sitting on. And I just happened to see it, it liked to, to be there on that, uh, uh, on that uh, perch. And that's the other thing I'm sure a lot of you know is that birds are habitual. Most, most animals are habitual. So if you learn where they like to land, uh, you can kind of plan ahead as far as you know, getting your focus right and all that. So uh, yeah, this is back deck and um, I've always liked that one. All right, next. And um, 
Yeah, this is one of my absolute favorite birds ever. Um, as you know, it's a Rufus hummingbird. And even, even with these birds, um, not only did I have a, I, I use a, I have a 600 F4, and then I put a 1.4 teleconverter, and then I put an extension tube because I can't, I have to focus close. And you have to do that if you want to get like a full frame shot of one of these birds. And this one was taken on my front deck. So, um, um, but yeah, they're, they're really feisty. I had one just come just right in my face, challenging me to, uh, to, I was walking down my stairs and it did not want me to do that. All righty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing to see here. Okay. Uh, this is, of course, a mountain bluebird. And there's a little bit of a story to this. I, I, I had taken a landscape photo. This is up near Wards. I'd taken a landscape photo up there 25 years ago, and, and I wanted to go back and see if I could recreate it somehow or some way. And so I'm up there, and I find the tree. It took a little while to find it. And then as I'm coming back to my truck, I see uh, um, a pair of uh, mountain bluebirds flying around. So I, st I stopped and watched it for a while. I'm like, okay, well, change of plans. So I, uh, the next day I came up uh, with my birding outfit and I, I set up and I waited and I waited and I waited. And I'm just like, okay, I, I, I lost it. But then this happened and I probably, I only had a chance to take maybe 20 photos and this is the only one I would let anybody see. Uh, all the others are, you know, you know how that is. But um, um, yeah, I, I, I'm just really pleased with how this one turned out. So um, there you have it. Thank you. The mountain bluebird, that was probably about five years ago, four or five years ago. Oh, wow. Uh, early, uh, we were, there's still snow on the ground. Uh, and there were moose run, roaming around too. But um, yeah, it was pretty early in the year. Sorry. Oh, yes. Do you use fill flash at all in any of your shots? The only place where I used fill flash in any of those was the Rufus. Yeah. Do you have a favorite season that you like to photograph? All of them. Yes. Yeah. Anyone else? You mentioned shooting film. Are the are any of the photos that we saw tonight filmed? These these are all digital, and, and I went into digital kicking and screaming because I'm just like, how can you get better than Kodachrome 25? And then I, the first cam, uh, digital camera I bought was a uh, Nikon D200. I think it was a 10 me megapixel camera. And the first time I looked at one, uh, one of the photographs from that, and just saw how much less noise there was from from digital to um, to actual film. I'm like, I'm I'm never going back. So uh, that that was that was my turning point. So everything since then has been digital, and all of these are digital. I'm, I, um, I'm not sure I'm either. What, what I tend to do is go out and, and find the bird I, I want to photograph or just go out in general and, and observe and find a bird that's worthy, that, well, they're all worthy of photographs, but uh, that I want to photograph. And then I just figure out a way to, to make that happen. And in general, I just, I, I like to find a spot and and sit and just photograph. And that's that's eighty percent of the time that's what I do. Um, the it's real hard to, to be um, very spontaneous with uh, you know, this massive tripod and this massive lens and just moving it around is is a is a pain in the ass to be quite 
Frank. So, uh, so yeah, I, I tend to set up having a plan and then go from there. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Liz Young. There is an X, mountain bluebird color. Right, thank you. And there's a light, wow. Hi everybody, thanks for inviting me. Um, I live up in Laramie, so I'm one of your uh, neighbors from the north. I used to live in Longmont a while back, and I was stationed in Colorado in the, in the mid-90s, so I'm familiar with the area. I have had a few chuckles at your expense when you were complaining about the wind. So. <laughs> So this is taken in my yard in um, Laramie. I live a little bit out of town. And uh, someone had hit a pronghorn. I don't quite know how you hit a pronghorn on a dirt road where the speed limit's 20 miles an hour and there's other houses and kids and stuff, but it's Wyoming. Um, so this is like a different kind of uh, environment to see a, a, a bald eagle. But I, I saw him coming around because the carcass had brought out some golden eagles and, and then this guy showed up. And it was kind of early in the morning, and it's possible I was still in my sweats and my slippers, and I thought, well, it's not going to be that long. So I ran out because I knew he was going to come in and land, and he circled for like half an hour, and I froze to death. But he did come in, and I took his picture. So <laughs> This is, uh, if you all remember the um, rookery tree just south of Fort Collins off of I-25, I, I do some work down um, in Denver some, and I was driving down, and I had my camera in the car. I, I like to keep it. And I saw these guys, and I saw the sun was setting. You know, I'm on I-25. It took me half a, mile, half a mile to figure out that I wanted to take a picture. I stopped. I pulled off the road. I grabbed my camera. I ran up. Uh, the cop stopped me and asked me what I was doing on the side of the road, and I said, man, I really got to go. Yeah. Um, so he let me go. And uh, so I took these pictures uh, before the sunset. So, so anybody know what these are? Horned yes, horned lark. So this is also in my yard. Um, you can see we feed the birds. And uh, every, every spring for the last few years, they, these are the males. And they have this uh, behavior where in a snowstorm in March, they fight for like a day and a half. And the girls watch, and then they're done, and everybody goes back to eating. But I went out, and I sat for a while and took these photos. It was 19 degrees, and, uh, yeah, so it was a little brisk. But I, I, they're one of my favorite birds. I really like them. Uh, so American Avocet, right? Um, this is Locomotive Springs, and that's up uh, north of the Great Salt Lake. And um, we don't get calm water like this in, in Laramie, so I just waited for a while until um, he touched his beak and I took his, his photo. Locomotive Springs, just not to be a downer, but it's down by like 70% in volume in the last 20 years. And, uh, but we still spray water to uh, water crops. Go ahead. Uh, these are ravens. And I took this in Big Bend National Park. And we went there you know, a few years ago. And we went in early April, so it wouldn't be hot. And it was over 100 every day. So we got up really early in the morning. We'd be out before dawn. And I saw these guys. And you guys, you know, ravens pretty much mate for life. And uh, I knew they were going to fly. Um, and, and they did, one at a time. So, OK, thank you all. <laughs> Questions? OK. OK. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Now yes, ma'am? Oh, you obviously travel. Do you travel following the birds, or do you, the birds just happen to be where you travel? Um, I travel with people I like, and, and I go to places that look interesting. And then generally, I'm the, the worst birder, the worst offender, and I, I, and I have been known to put us behind schedule. Um, but what are you laughing about? So I, I do travel to see birds like Ecuador, hummingbirds, boy, you know, I could not take that. Uganda was more about going to see mountain gorillas and stuff, but there were a lot of pretty birds there. So um. thank you all. Thank you. Leslie. 
Um, volunteer naturalist with the Boulder County uh, Parks and Open Space, and I've been involved in birding and taking pictures for 50 years. Uh, I live um, in the foothills outside of Lyons, so I don't have to travel very far to find subjects. I had lived in Netherland before then, so I've been around Colorado now for more than, more, many more years than I want to tell you. <laughs> so, okay, let's see what we've got here. <clears throat> okay, this is a little um, chickadee, black-capped chickadee that was on a um, oh, very dead sunflower and he's picking out the seeds and he was right next to the house um, and um, we do have some hollyhocks in the backyard and we get four kinds of hummingbirds now we get the rufous the broad tail we get a black chin and sometimes we get calliope so we're very lucky to see all of the possibles that we could possibly see in Colorado I have been to Costa Rica and Ecuador and all those places and they're wonderful. If you get to go there, take it up because the hummingbirds down there, the bird books have about 30 pages of hummingbirds. This, that one was, I called my high key hummingbird. This is the low key hummingbird. These are um, both, they were both female rufuses. And, uh, Everybody knows what that is. <laughs> and it's another one of those uh, in its environment, so it kind of gives you the portrait and the, the background at the same time, like the other gentleman who had the yellow-headed blackbird. They're out now. This was out at Walden Ponds. <clears throat> and this spring doesn't happen for me until I hear these guys singing. They're just so wonderful. This was out on the <clears throat> out on the eastern plains of Colorado, but um, there they go. And uh, Avocet also, uh, and this was in uh, Crescent Lake area uh, near, well, just over the border from Colorado. I, not quite Colorado, but almost. And we do have them here also. So. And, <laughs> And this guy was in our backyard parading around and uh, looking very studly. So I had to do a close-up of him. <laughs> a face that only a mother could love. Yes. But the, oh, that's okay. Okay. I'm, I will say my... Um, my father was a photographer, and I started with film, but I never was really very good at going into the dark room or any of that stuff. So when digital came out, I jumped on it, and my first camera was a 3-megapixel Olympus. And uh, my, my f real goal in life is, taking, is being a travel photographer. So I like to travel, take pictures of animals, birds, whatever, um, snakes anything, I, whatever crosses my path, I'm happy to take its picture. But I do love birds particularly. Anyway, any questions? You've lived in, uh, I, I, I feel weird asking a non-bird question, but you've lived in some places where there's quite a bit of wildlife ever photographed a mountain lion? I have, um, well, I have seen a number of mountain lions where we live. Um, the only photograph I ever got was uh, when I saw a mom and two cubs drinking at the pond right outside our window. But by the time I got my ran back and got my camera and ran back, it was already up the hill. So I have one miserably ugly picture of a mountain lion on the hillside. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, when we first moved out there, we used to see a lot of them. I, I probably seen at least two dozen mountain lions in my life out there. <laughs> I really like the perspective on your metal work. So, how, how'd you creep up all over the um, I was actually in my car. <laughs> and he was on a tall pole. So, um, cars are wonderful blinds, by the way. Um, they just, uh, you can get a lot of good bird shots from the inside of your car. But uh, I rolled down the window and he was singing away. And, and I was, um, yeah, looking up at, up at it. 
<laughs> I have two lenses and two camera bodies, it's, and they've been with me forever. Um, I use Canon, although I did just upgrade to the R5. It's pretty exciting, although this camera is far more smart than I am, and it's going to take me a while to be able to get used to it. But um, um, I have 170 to 300 millimeter lens, and that's it. And the man who carts his tripod around, boy, good for you, because I absolutely despise them. <laughs> I, will, I can't bother to carry all that stuff, especially now I'm getting a little elderly. So, is that it? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Woody. Woody Green. Well, first of all, John, thanks for having me tonight. And um, I just want to also say that my friend George is here uh, tonight, and he and I both had uh, black and white dark rooms in high school in our house. And uh, so we, we've both been doing photography for a long, long time. Um, my dad gave me a uh, Kodak Brownie when I was seven years old, and I've been doing it ever since then. Um, but today is George's birthday, so everyone please say happy birthday to George. So, um, yeah, and, and then, you know, it, it, when I was seven years old or so, uh, I started taking pictures on vacations and all this, and that kind of graduated to my dad continually giving me his latest camera, and I took it over. And uh, then eventually, when I was in uh, high school, it really took off. I took pictures constantly and, and spent tons of, room in the, t tons of time in the dark room. Uh, in college, I made some money doing sports photography, but I never really got into serious wildlife photography until about uh, nine or ten years ago. Um, we, my wife and I were out on a run, and we saw pelicans, um, and I thought, well, that'd be kind of, you know, I've got a good camera. Why don't I go see if I can get some pictures? And then I was hooked, and that's that led to buying a lot of different cameras and a lot of different lenses and and on and on, as I'm sure some of you can relate to. So that's kind of my uh, kind of my story as far as where I'm coming from. Any of you who know uh, kingfishers know that these guys are very skittish. They're not interested in having people anywhere near them. And uh, the way I got this particular picture, I was kind of out on a, a point that went out into a pond, and I just sat there quietly and waited for things to happen. And along came this guy, and he uh, had no idea I was taking his picture, and once he figured it out, he was gone really quick. <laughs> it is a girl, yes. So uh, one of my favorite... Uh, uh, small birds to take pictures of is goldfinch and I especially love them when they're on the sunflowers I will just find a stand of sunflowers and I'll spend an hour hour and a half two hours just photographing these lively little guys so yeah here we have a wood duck and uh, again this is a, a bird that I'll spend hours and hours photographing um, there's some spots uh, where they're pretty tame and they come pretty close. Um, and I just really like the perspective on this shot. So uh, some of you might want to avert your eyes. I apologize. <laughs> but uh, one of my absolute favorite things in the world to do is to follow owl nests. And I spend hours and hours, and I get up ridiculously early. This was taken uh, definitely before sunrise. Um, and I, I get so attached to these birds that when they fledge, I'm literally kind of depressed. <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't get to go see my buddies anymore. And so this was taken this year. And as you can see, uh, mom's making a delivery to the youngsters. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, each year, my wife and I head down to New Mexico and uh, 
take advantage of a place called Bosque de la Pacha that I'm sure a lot of you know about. And we'll stay there for a few days and, and just immerse ourselves in the wildlife there. And of course, the Sandhill Cranes are a huge attraction. There's thousands and thousands of them down there. And uh, this just happens to be one of my favorite pictures that I took of them. So I, I don't know how many of you were able to see uh, the uh, Bohemian wax wings when they came in last year. There was a huge, what, what they call an eruption of them, where uh, literally thousands of them came into Colorado. And, and normally there's very few, if any. Uh, and these guys went around in huge flocks and they'd arrive and they'd be in a tree or uh, you know some some place where they could forage and they'd be there for five ten minutes and then all poof, gone and so you just had to be there at the right place at the right time and uh, these guys posed quite nicely for me So this might be one of my very favorite pictures I've ever taken. Uh, this is at a nest that I've followed for several years. Mom and dad come back every year. They're ju just amazing parents. And uh, you know, I just like the, the parent and child bond in this picture. Any questions? Well, that depends on the situation, but the, the lens I use most of the time is a 500 millimeter f5.6. Um, I, I prefer to use a prime lens when I can because the quality is a little bit higher than most of the zoom lenses, although the newer zoom lenses are getting pretty amazing. But yeah, I, I saved for a long time to get that particular lens. Um, I'm a retired uh, teacher, so I, I don't have a lot of money to spend on equipment. and. And so, yeah, that's, that's on my camera body about 95% of the time. No, it's, it's a pretty light lens. It's, it's, it's a, a specific type of um, lens, and I don't ask me to tell you the physics behind it, but uh, it's a very light lens, actually. Yes? How many shots get taken to Well, I bet... Lorraine, what did we have? Five or ten minutes at the most with them? Yeah, I had the I had the shutter down at least fifty percent of the time. I mean I, I in that five or ten minutes I'm sure I probably took eight hundred pictures. Um, it, it, when you've got an opportunity you take it. You don't you don't say, Oh, I don't I don't want to pray and spray. I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot and shoot like crazy when I have an opportunity like that. So, um, yeah, and they, there's I have several pictures that are similar to that where they're just looking really cute. We know what I mean about gun right. <laughs> I am a machine gunner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. No. Uh, the only time I ever walk away from a subject is when it leaves or when the light leaves, um, and, and with very few exceptions. I mean, you know, eventually I have to eat, right? But yeah, I, I never leave a good opportunity. Yes. Um, I, I do both, but I tend to do uh, mornings more. Um, the evening, the problem that I have is that, you know, when the light leaves, then that's when the good pictures are there. Whereas in the morning, you know, sure, you get there when it's dark, but you know you can keep shooting for a while. So it's just a psychological thing because you probably wind up getting equal number of good pictures, but I just prefer the morning. Thanks. All right, Doug. Good evening. Thank you, uh, John, for inviting me. I'm kind of a last minute. Um, the photographer, I guess, couldn't do it, and I got asked to come out here tonight. Um, 
I'm also not a real wildlife photographer. Um, I tend to do more sports, travel. I've traveled all over the world, um, landscapes. But I happened to fall into um, wildlife photography during COVID. Um, and there happened to be, um, here in Longmont, I live here in Longmont, there happened to be an, a, a nest of great horned owls in a park, like three minute walk away from where I lived. And it was an absolutely perfect tree. Um, it was a willow, uh, it's Willow Farm Park um, off of uh, uh, Clover Basin and, uh, and Fordham. And this tree had been cut down, must have been struck by lightning a few years ago. But it was a perfect tree because it had a, a, a notch in it. And it was a perfect um, environment for a, a pair of mating owls who've lived there for four or five years. Well, during COVID, um, I happened to go down and start photographing um, these owls. Um, so um, this nest was about maybe 25 feet from a pathway, a very busy park um, and uh, uh, strategic with a bridge. So there were different sides that you could take pictures of. And uh, this is a small outlet that uh, was yawning and I happened to capture the, the picture there. Um, this is a, um, a red-tailed hawk up in uh, Fort Collins. And uh, I went up there one day and it was there and I got down on my, uh, I was laying on, the, on my stomach to take this picture. Um, and uh, it kind of blended in with the background there. Um, back to the owls again. Um, th this, uh, this, this pair um, in 2022, or 2020 had uh, two owlets. In 2023, she had three outlets, and um, one year they didn't have any. Um, last year they had four. This year, the owl's nest was destroyed by the city, unfortunately. The city decided that they did not want to deal with uh, all the people watching these owls, and they came in and they cut. They didn't cut the tree down, but they cut down the notch, so it effectively destroyed the the the. The nest, but uh, this is uh, taken. Um, they're sitting there watching me. I I talked to the naturalist, and I wasn't really happy with uh, with that. Um, there's another picture. I don't know if the next one. No. Oh, that one. So sometimes you get really lucky, and. Um, I, I used to go down every night um, about five o'clock or so and, and the light was just absolutely perfect and uh, happened to come down about after, about five, maybe maybe a minute after mama had um, given this owlet a garter snake. Unfortunately, the garter snake decided, the owlet decided to swallow the owlet, swallow the garter snake tail first instead of head first. And the garter snake wasn't too happy and turned around and ended up embedding itself in the neck of the owlet. And I watched this owlet and um, another one helping them for 45 minutes trying to pull this snake out of its neck. And it was, it was a struggle. I mean, this was a huge snake. And 45 minutes finally was able to, to get it away and it swallowed it and then they both they both took a nap. That was the story. <laughs> but this was, uh, yeah, this was a, a, a kind of a peak action shot of of the snake. Sports yeah. So this is the other owlet trying to help uh, pull pull the uh, pull the snake out of the uh, the neck of. Uh, and at the, at this point in time, I think it had pulled it out, and it was trying to trying to pull the rest of it out. Um, And then um, feathers and the kind of a shield. Um, sometimes owlets fall out of the nest, and uh, uh, there are some photographers that uh, thought that they could pick up the um, not this one in particular, but uh, another one, and that wasn't very good. That was probably one of the reasons why the city decided that was enough. But this one happened to fall on the ground across the creek. 
and I was on the other side of the creek and I had a 500 millimeter lens and uh, I shot across the creek through the grass at this owlet staring at me. So this is out on Golden Pond here and the pelicans and this is one of those shots that you don't know what you have until you get home. You shoot a burst and um, the uh, just fish flying everywhere and I have a whole bunch of different positions but I kind of like that fish up on the top and then there's another one kind of sticking out of the bill right there. Um, but they're pretty amazing fishers. <laughs> And there's, there's a northern pygmy owl. This is in Lyons. Um, and usually we'll find these guys right on the border of the grasslands and pine trees. So like as you're heading up through Lyons and you're starting to climb up into the mountains, that's kind of the area um, where, you, where you'll find these guys. And um, super cold day, probably about uh, two or three degrees. So it was quite fluffed out. And the crazy thing about these guys, if you see them from behind, they have eyes on the back of their head. They've, they've got feathers that look like eyes. So um, just to scare off any predator that's sneaking up behind them, that would probably be good for teachers too. Woody. I used to be a teacher. Okay, the, the gamble quail, and this is in Grand Junction. And um, just, just being on the front range here, I saw these, I saw this out of the corner of my eye and it was just like, holy smokes, you know, but I guess they're really common in California and Arizona and places that take a lot of pictures of uh, the gamble quail, but that little spiky action they got going on the wing, wings with the, uh, the little plume, um, quite, uh, quite photogenic little birds. And this is uh, at Bar Lake. And um, I saw on the trail easily three, 4,000 red-winged blackbirds all just on, the ground was carpeted with them. And uh, they were all just foraging on some type of seed. And I just kind of walked, because they were on the trail. So I just kind of walked toward them. And then when they, uh, they took off, I just started shooting bursts. And I found this picture because the one's kind of right in the middle. Um, but it's, it's weird, the autofocus. You know, you see some of them that are in perfect focus and some of them that are not. Um, but, yeah, so, so that was a, a bird's moment. That's how I started off tonight with the movie The Birds. The red-winged blackbirds can also kill people. Yeah. This is uh, Rufus, the little orange tyrant. Something about orange and uh, domination. Um, but the nice thing about photographing hummingbirds, and especially the rufous, is it will chase away everything around it, but it will go back to the exact same spot when it's done. And so you will notice that that little twig, and this is up in Eldora, you notice that that little twig is where that rufous is hanging out. And I just hung out the window, and there was grass, you know, long grass behind it. And they, they arrive late, the rufous, and um, all the other hummingbirds are having a pretty good cooperative time. And then these guys show up and they ruin everything. And they really, and, and they are one of the smallest hummingbirds as well. And uh, very small and very uh, in your face. So little rufous. And some great horned owls, you know, sort of a, um, getting affectionate. And I think this one is in Longmont. Um, and I just wanted to say a quick story about the great horned owls is in Brian's neighborhood and my neighborhood at the St. Andrew Church, those high winds blew out one of the outlets the other day. It was basically in the parking lot. And uh, I called all around trying to get help. And, you know, because it was too small. This was, these ones were too small to ever get back in the nest. And that nest was 35 feet up. And I knew that the rabbits were going to come for it because they don't like the owls and they kick it. And so I took it to the uh, Birds of Prey Foundation in Broomfield. And uh, the, the little guy, uh, they checked him out totally fine. They have a resident owl there. 
a mother owl that feeds them, and then they're going to release him in the uh, in midsummer uh, when he's ready to go. So, uh, um, and then I thought I thought that's something about bird photographers and birders. We're also out there in the environment, and we're checking on our friends. And if there's a nest and we see a problem with the nest, you know, we or uh, you know fish hooks um, like at Golden Ponds, you got. Uh, the fish hooks are just a nightmare sometimes for osprey. And um, it's, you know, I, I put that online and I said, hey, birders out there, um, go check check your uh, owl nest to make sure that they're okay because some of them are too small um, to uh, ever make it back up into their nest. So anyway, I think that might be my last one. Yep. So anyway.